Welcome back. I am Dr. Samaria M. Covert. Uh, for those who are new, I am the founder of Kingdom Creative Counseling. It's a licensed mental health agency located in downtown Greensboro. I am also a entrepreneur. I'm an author. I have written close to 60 books and I am a licensed therapist. I give you faith-based principles to bring about lasting change. Welcome back. Um, we're going to talk about an interesting topic today. We're going to talk about 10 uh, types of spiritual warfare every leader will have to uh, will experience. Um, as a disclaimer, um, I was, well, first off, I was going through, I was trying to, uh, when I was putting this together, uh, I actually found 20. <laughs> uh, and so you make your flyers, if you watch this via Instagram or if you watch this via, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, YouTube, uh, it'll, it'll say 10, but I'm going over 20. Um, and of course on Facebook, you know, it's 20. Um, so anyway, so I want to give you a resource. I always give you resources. Uh, I wrote a book and I'm actually, uh, wrote part of a, um, seminar and I got two parts. I got to do the last one, but this is my book that I wrote back in 2018. Uh, it is called broken, trying to leave. My background is this, y'all broken, trying to leave. You can pick it up. Link is going to be placed in the subscription box below. And if you're listening to this via my podcast, again, uh, it'll be available via my website, okay? Broken, trying to leave. This is the book, all right? Okay, so my background is this. Um, those who know, I started off being a trauma therapist. And then um, I've always studied like leadership, leadership development. I did my doctoral dissertations about, you know, the difference between Christian leadership development, how people uh, are grow and developed and how God uh, chooses and all things like that. So well, anyway, when I started my private practice, um, uh, God just opened the door. And so now a lot of the people that I see are ministry and, and business leaders who identify mental and emotional wounds. And so uh, a lot of the things that I will talk to you about, I have had to talk to my clients about um, because they have experienced lots of things. And sometimes when people know, um, you can't always stop people from experiencing life. That is just life. But if you are aware and you are knowledgeable, the Bible says we perish because of lack of knowledge. If you are aware of some of the things that you experience, it helps you to put it in context. You know, I give you the information, what you do with the information is up to you, but it does help to know that what I'm experiencing is not something abnormal. It is something that's in line because I'm anointed. <clears throat> okay. So let's talk about this. I'm not going to go over this in a lot of detail. I'm just going to give you these 20. We're going to knock it out. We're going to go home. We're also going to talk about in upcoming sessions, uh, how not to create a spiritual issue. And that is when you try to um, manipulate the promises of God by using man-made means and you create a spiritual Ishmael. Uh, we're also going to talk about another one. What did I say I was going to do? Uh, like I can't think of the other one I was going to do. But anyway, it'll be, <laughs> it'll be it'll be shortly coming up, okay? So the first thing that every leader will have to experience is rejection. You will be rejected. And the Bible talks about so many different times um, when leaders were, there's so many different examples. Um, David, Joseph, even Jesus, he went among his own hometown and his hometown did not receive him. He could not do many miracles. Now, one thing the Lord spoke to me many years ago, he said, Samaria, you're going to be rejected. However, rejection does not have to affect you in a negative way. What happens in this era of spiritual warfare is that if you allow that spirit uh, rejection that food rejection to get in you and grow and you personalize certain things that you don't understand as a part of your call as a part of your purpose as a leader you're going to be rejected by certain people um you will have a bitterness or an emptiness or a anger or a resentment towards people when god has orchestrated your rejection i said god has orchestrated your rejection. Joseph had to be rejected because of the promise. Jesus had to be rejected so that we all could uh, experience life and life more abundantly through him, through his blood. And so you're going to experience rejection. The area of spiritual warfare comes in is that how you perceive that rejection and whether or not it sinks into you and then creates this ulterior person that's wounded, that's weary, and that's um, undone. Okay. The next thing I talked about a lot about is spirit of Jezebel, <clears throat> which is also a spirit of power and control. Remember that Jezebel is not a person, it's a spirit, but in the Bible, the Bible talks about in Revelations, how Jezebel was a woman who called herself a prophet. And, uh, and, and the Bible talks about how in Revelations, he said, the thing I have against you, the church, is that you allow this woman who calls herself a prophet in your pulpits to preach and prophesy and cause people to turn away 
from God. Jezebel represents an, a spirit that is motivated by unhealthy and impure motives. Uh, Jezebel uh, seeks uh, authority, seeks power, and seeks um, platforms. She goes from place to place, church to church, house to house, man to man. Uh, again, again, Jezebel can be a woman. I mean, can be a man, can be a woman. Um, not finding rest because she's seeking dominion, power, and authority. And so as a leader, when you operate under God's hand and God's authority, you have to use discernment. What the spirit of Jezebel does is it'll, she'll, she'll, keep, she'll let you be in position, but she will emasculate you for men and, or she will immobilize you for women. Okay. And remember Jezebel could be a man or a woman and you're still in position. And now you have been so emasculated, you're in position, but she is holding the power. She attempts to observe yourself, meaning to observe herself above authority. Okay. So she operates under dishonor, disrespect, and I'm not being submitted to anyone. All right. So again, you want to check out those two teachings that I did called the spirit of power control. I uh, talked about Ahab must die. Uh, I talked about, you know, these things already. So I'm, again, not going into detail, but you will experience people that, who have this type of spirit. You will. Now, again, uh, just because you meet people who have this, uh, this spirit, just because, um, just because you you know come across these people does not mean it has to infect you in a negative way, but it does mean that you have to be aware and discerning of when you come across a Jezebel. Because remember, nobody presents themselves as Jezebel. They come across as flattery. Uh, I'm into you. She comes across as everything you ever want, desire, need. He or she, you know, I'm just trying to help you. That kind of thing. All right. Uh, so we're gonna come across people who operate in the spirit of Jezebel. <clears throat> You're also going to come across uh, perverted authority, perverted authority. <laughs> Excuse me. These are people that uh, appear to operate under a anointing, but they really have a counterfeit anointing. Uh, they have anointing that's not birthed by God, but birthed through the flesh. They call themselves prophets and pastors and leaders. Again, not knocking, not knocking, uh, you know, I remember church. <clears throat> but these are people who operate under a false anointing, a counterfeit anointing. The Bible says that in the last days that people have a form of godliness, but they're not in power. These people that can prophesy you under the table, they can shout you under the table and they're not operating because they're not submitted to God or his leaders. Okay. That's perverted authority. I didn't do a teaching on that. I've done a lot of these teachings, so I'm going over this fairly quickly. Um, and again, if you want to know, know a little bit more about perverted authority, if you watch this via YouTube, just go through that live, just type in perverted authority, Dr. Samaria M. Culver, and it will pull up, okay? You also experience abandonment um, and on, on your journey. And when I say leadership, let me just clarify. I should have probably clarified at the beginning. I'm not necessarily referring to like church leadership because my leadership is really outside of the church as of, at, at this moment, but it can transfer to that uh, in your lives, in your homes, in your, in your businesses, in your ministries, in any area of your life, you're going to experience some of these things. And there's abandonment. People that said they would love you. They said they would rock with you. They were your do or die and they left you <laughs> high and dry. Um, everyone who starts out with you is not going to go the journey with you. A loyalty does expire and everyone is in your face and smiling and saying, we're going to get going uh, together. It's not going to be going with you no matter how hard you try. There's some people who at some point are simply are not called to where you're going. They're not called to you. Okay. And we keep people in our lives out of loyalty, but that's not what God wants for us. Okay. Um, and that just happens. And sometimes God has to, what I said in previous teaching, God has to orchestrate our rejection. He has to orchestrate them turning their hearts cold towards us. But he has to orchestrate that so that we won't take people into the promise that don't belong. And you will have to experience abandonment. You know, Jesus was uh, going about um, um, casting out demons and performing miracles. And then uh, there was something that ended up happening. And Jesus said, uh, he looked at the disciples, those people who said that they were going to follow him because a bunch of them had left. He looked at his disciples and said, are you going to leave me too? Uh, you will have the feeling of abandonment. Sometimes, even if you really want to be honest, in your spiritual life, you have a feeling of abandonment. God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, that's what Jesus said to God when he was on the cross. My God, my God, why are you forsaken me? Forsaken means to be abandoned. There were times in life where things will happen in your life. You do not, you don't 
uh, understand it. And it feels like, God, you, I feel like you just left me high and dry. I feel like you have abandoned in me. Now he has not, but you can feel that way. And sometimes you can generally really truly be abandoned by people. And that just happened and it's painful, but it's a part of your process. I said, it's painful, but it's a part of your process. You will be abandoned by certain people. You'll never be abandoned by God. And how you, uh, how you uh, handle these painful moments will dictate your elevation in God right? You also experience isolation. Now, isolation, you got to be careful about this isolation thing because I, you know, I don't think that you could be so anointed that you can't be a member of the church. I don't believe that you're so anointed that you get to get revelation and you can't submit yourself to somebody. I don't believe that. However, you will experience seasons of isolation, not necessarily from your church or your church family, but from, from people. Again, uh, you'll be isolated. And I, I did a uh, I did a I did a book called Hidden Trying to Lead. I may post that link below as well. Sometimes the God does He hides you, as I said in, in plain sight. He hides you uh, in plain sight because He's developing you. He has to develop you in isolation. You're not you're not really prepared for the anointing in front of people. You are prepared for the anointing behind closed doors. Now let's be clear about this. People can give you an opportunity. They can give you an opportunity. They will never give you the anointing. The anointing, the skill, what God has called you to is developed in isolation. Do not get caught up. People have platforms. Because I know people right now got platforms, got dates, and they're, they ain't there anointed. You can tell. You can tell when someone's under the anointing when they begin to speak or when they begin to teach or when, they're, when, when God is uh, when God has developed them, when God is uh, working on them, when God has 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 hand upon their business, or they choose, and you can tell that, you know, just because somebody gave you a microphone don't mean you're anointed. So sometimes it's better to sit down somewhere and isolate and, and allow the isolation process to happen, and God develops you. Because when you're not isolated, you're not just sitting there watching uh, uh, watching Netflix. You're sitting there studying. You're sitting sitting there developing. You're sitting there. And, 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 and you're being prepared in secret places. So isolation is a season. You know, I received this word many, many years ago. It is true. Um, for those who know, I went to Bennett College. And so we, I remember years ago, I went to a, um, a choir retreat. So I sing on the choir at, at Bennett College, okay? Uh, and we went to a choir retreat. And there was a lady there. She was preaching and she was prophesying. And so after... I mean, she was preaching and afterwards she went, she began to prophesy, give people prophecies. And she went around the room and I, I was hearing the prophecy and I know my time is next and I know I'm saved. I don't know about these other people. Some of y'all, you know, you know, I just, I didn't know. I didn't know, you know, but I know I, I, I was super dedicated to God. And so I'm hearing this person's going to go this and this person is good. That, that's going to happen. And this person, you're going to do missions and you're going to, God is going to have you traveling all around the world because you're a missionary and you're, and you're, uh, uh, you're, uh, uh, and, and you over here, God is going to bless you in this area. So I said, okay, you know, she got to me. I'm ready now. I didn't heard all these other prophetic words. Now come on, sis. I'm ready. I'm ready for my word. She said, you're going to get to a place. Listen to me. You are going to get to a place in your life where it feels like God is your only friend. I said, well, I said, now I know. And I, I'm waiting for the rest of it now. Like, I appreciate that woman. I appreciate her. I don't remember her name. I don't remember what she looks like, but I remember that word. She said, you're going to get to a place in your life where it's going to feel like God is your only friend. And then she moved on to that. She didn't know me. You understand? She didn't know me. And I didn't have, I still don't, I never had a lot of friends. Okay. I'm just not that person. I, ever, I don't think everybody's my friend. So, you, you know, I know a lot of people. Because it's just in, in natural in life as you're going through life and you have your careers and things, you live long enough, you start knowing a lot of people. Um, but I remember that. And I didn't have a lot of friends then, but I remember my best friend. I remember uh, certain people in my life that were there. And I think, what would happen if I felt like they were my only friend? If they gone. And, it, and God was giving me this, this, this prophetic word. And it had nothing to do with being antisocial, had nothing to do with uh, God didn't like me, had nothing to do with any of that. Had everything to do because the anointing has to be developed in you. And sometimes he has to develop you in hidden places. And so when I went through seasons in my life where I felt like God was, God was my only friend, I remember that word and I knew in my heart 
that this is a temporary season that God was using to develop me into what he's called me to be. The reason why people oftentimes make poor choices and the reason why we, we oftentimes don't have a close relationship with God because we always have too many people in our ear and we don't hear what God is saying. I'm on speaking terms with God. I hear his voice. I know when he's speaking. I know when he's not speaking. I had this sermon. I know the gifts of the spirit. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that because my isolation has produced something. Why is it that we become people who don't like to be alone? If you don't like you and you can't stand your own presence, what makes you think that someone else is going to come along and like it? You don't got to like me. You ain't got to think Samaria's pretty. You ain't got to think Samaria's smart. You ain't got to think Samaria does it all correct. I don't think I do it all correct. You ain't got to think good about me at all but it was in my isolation times that I began to hear God speak to me. I was still connected, obviously, to a church and I still got to see my clients. I'm not like sitting up there not doing nothing. I still got to do stuff, but it was in those times that I began to hear God who said, I don't care what people say about you, Samaria. I delight in you. Hear my voice. When people try to hate on me and tell me I did things I never said, I never done, never thought to do. God says, I know the truth, Samaria. You don't have to defend yourself. Get alone and stop trying to always be in people's face. When it is time, God will reveal you. So I thank God for that woman because she was a real prophet because she wasn't sugarcoating it. She wasn't telling me in 41 days, baby girl, you're going to get married. In 22 days, you're going to be a millionaire. She was telling me a real for real word that I could carry throughout my life. So when those seasons came and it got hard and I said, God, what did I do? He said, nothing. This is the season that I have you in, because I had, this is what God told me, I have not rejected you, I've chosen you, so I, because I chose you, I got to deal with you differently. Isolation. I think you're going to deal with this betrayal. You're going to deal with betrayal. People that smile in your face, that cry on the altar with you, that shout with you, will stab you in your back. And then smile and pretend like they ain't do nothing. They'll gaslight you and look at you dead in your eye like they ain't done a thing wrong. They'll betray you. They'll call you a liar. They'll reveal your secrets to other people. They'll put your name on social media. They will, the same ones that did the dirt will put it on you. I'm not telling you this to make you uh discouraged. I'm telling you, this is the cost of being anointed. See, everybody, these, 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 these folks, they don't really want to be anointed. Let me tell you. Let me, let me just let me just read 100 with y'all. These folks out here, they don't really want to be anointed. They're not for real. Because the anointing is going to break you so God can be raised in you. These folks, they want platform. They want likes. That's what they want. You know, you're trying to get back to who's who and who's what and and these are people I'm going to talk about the opportunists. They're opportunists. They, they're trying to get next to the person who, who knows somebody who got, who got connections. Because they feel their unhealthy need for validation. See, when God anoints you, it's not about you. It's about the call. It's about the purpose. It's about the plan. These folks out here, they want to be seen. Tip me, tap me, love me. Me, me, me. It ain't really even about God. And it ain't about you. You are dealing with people who will portray you. Jesus said, Jesus called Judas friend, by the way. He knew who his betrayer was and he still hung out with them. God has to teach us how, and I'm not telling you to keep people who betray you in your life. I'm not saying that. How to handle yourself. When you you know you you know you know listen, you got you got you got lies on me, but I got receipts on you, and my receipts don't lie. So your stuff is fake and fraud. Mine is real. And if I really wanted to, listen. If I really wanted to, listen. Y'all don't y'all only. If I really wanted to, but God, I said no. Don't do that. Don't do that. 
I got you, Samaria. I got you, John Doe. I got you, whomever who listened to this. I got you. I got you. He'll betray you. But it's all for the glory of God. It's all for the glory. Sometimes people got to betray us because we keep trying to put people in positions that they are not qualified for. You are going to be betrayed. And if you're weak-minded, and if you don't have any type of backbone, and if you give up easy, you're not qualified to lead anybody. I don't want to talk to nobody that's just cute. I'm cute. I know, but first of all, I know that's gonna be on cute. I know I'm beautiful. You can you can disagree or not agree. I know I'm beautiful. I know my heart is pure. I know I serve God for real, but I don't serve God based upon likes. I don't do what I do for people to like me. I don't have to dance and get in front of people to get to, for anybody, to get anybody's attention because I've been qualified, but I also experience betrayal. You also experience gossip, rumors, spirits of division and accusation. They will accuse you of things that you're, now I'm, uh, that you ain't never do. Now I'm of this. Now if I done it, I'm gonna admit it. Keep moving. I have no shame. If I did it, I'm gonna admit to it. Cause I'm covered by the blood. I'm not intentionally doing anything out, you know, out crazy, but, but, but I'm talking about accusations, false accusations. They said you've done things you ain't never even thought to do. You never, it never crossed your mind to do something so ratchet. You're going to have to do, cause remember the Bible says Satan is an accuser of the brethren. Satan himself accused God. Satan himself accused God. He will accuse God to you if God really loved you why are you going through this so if God if, if Satan himself has enough bold and tenacity and 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 evilness in him to accuse God himself who created <coughs> the heavens and the earth what makes you think that you can get through life and be successful according to God's standards and they don't accuse you of nothing. You got to make sure that it ain't true. So if you accuse me of something, I'm not going to admit something I ain't never do. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care what you put out on the internet about me. I don't care how who you talk to about me. I don't care how long you know me. If I ain't do it, I'm going to tell you the truth. And that's one thing about the truth. I know about Samaria. The truth does not have to be concealed. If I tell you the truth here... Uh, six months from now, I'm going to tell you that same truth. Five years from now, I'm going to tell you the same truth. Ten years from now, I'm going to tell you the same truth. It'll be 30 years. I'll still tell you the same truth. But a liar has to keep lying. And then they got to keep adding to the lie because they done forgot how to lie the first time. And they got to make the lie make sense. And it still don't make sense because they got to keep covering their tracks. You will be lied on. You'll have gossip and rumors about you. And I true people that said that they love you will sit in rooms and talk trash about you. You will be accused of things that never even came into your heart. You'll be accused of it. <clears throat> and guess what? It's the cost of being called. It is not what you experience that dictates your, your success. It is how you handle it. And a mature Christian then go back and forth. I can't stand you. I'm ratchet and I still got, I'm, 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 I'm ratchet. And I still got some, I'm, I'm righteous, but I still got some ratchetness in this. You know, I, I'm a Christian, but I still knock if you buck. I'm Christian. I'm a hood at the same time. That is an immature Christian. And you see people, these little, saying these little, <coughs> see these little uh, memes and things like that. When they say that, they wear them t-shirts. They ain't ready. They ain't ready. You, if somebody accuses you, you ready to take it outside, you ain't ready. You're ready when you can handle it and it doesn't stop you. Even if it causes you pain, it doesn't stop not one single thing. You still smile. You still love on people. And you forgive. Even when they don't think they've done something wrong. You don't have to have a conversation, close a conversation with anybody. You forgive them. You block and delete. I don't understand why you, you know, someone keeps doing things to you, you just keep answering the phones. That's just, you know, that's just weird. You, you, you obviously want, you want it. You understand what I'm saying? 
But once I know you a demon, <coughs> I can forgive you. God bless you. I'm not, let, I'm not I'm abandoning you. I am surrendering you to somebody else. But you will have people that gossip about you. And then if people can't find something on you, let me help y'all. If people can't find something on you, they'll make stuff up. I'm telling you, with everything I've, I've talked about, I experienced all this. I'll be somewhere. Now, I'm not going to take my business. What happened? I'll be somewhere. Mind my business. You know what I'm saying? I don't bother anybody. I handle my business. I live my life according to the scripture as best as I can. You have people. You're not thinking about them. They think about you. You live, you just do, trying to be a Christian. They think about you because they're motivated <coughs> by jealousy and envy. Excuse me, y'all. Let me get some water. I'm put this on pause real quick. Hold on. All right. So they're motivated by jealousy and envy. And they actually think if they can bring you down, if they can bring you down, they can put themselves in position. It's a strategy of the enemy. Right? It's a strategy of the enemy. Doesn't matter how good of a person you are, they, if they cannot, if they cannot find something on you, they'll make it up. They'll twist your words. They'll try to intimidate you. You said this. That's not, that's not the context by which I said that. It's the cost of being called. It's called now you have great, you'll have great highs, you have great lows. We have times of great, great authority where God is just, it just your hand, God's hand is just t- everything you do is, is, is just, is just flowing and going. But Paul said that he says he said that God has opened many doors for me, but with those doors comes many adversaries. And the process, that's why we have to be processed correctly, teaches us how to handle adversaries. So handle blessings is, is, is wonderful. You got to be prepared for that too because you don't blow the blessings. But that's fine. But you got to be processes to how to handle adversaries and so, so the adversaries don't take you out of character. You may have to struggle with pride. Paul said this. He said, I was given a thorn in my flesh because of the level of revelation God was releasing to you. And he said, I asked God three times to remove this thorn from my flesh. But God says, my grace is sufficient. So as you're going on, as the more you accomplish, you will have seasons in your life <coughs> excuse me, where the spirit of pride wants to step in. Okay? So God has to humble you. You can't ever say as a leader, you never uh, lift up in pride. Can never say that. You ever say it? You know, let me not, let me not go there. Let me not say that. I've, 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 I've seen them. I've seen them. I've seen them all. I've never, I've never seen a leader. Never. That didn't have a prideful statement. Does that mean you you sit and lay and and you are a prideful person all the time? It means that sometimes you can accomplish so much if you're not careful. That spirit of pride will kick in. God has to allow you to go through some things to bring you back down to humble you. And if you live that long on this earth, you're going to experience that. You can never. You cannot go through. And you, it may not have been that you spent hours and years in the spirit of pride but there comes a time where it just starts to creep in god has to pull you back wait a minute you have to deal with people who are rebellious we are living in a generation i think because we're getting closer to the end of days but people are very re- rebellious and yeah you know, i was talking to god you know i, I tell people I, I talk to god like he's my friend i, I just he's he's you know i just because i see things i see things i hear things and uh, if it don't make sense, I usually have to go to God and say, God, that don't make sense. I mean, I know my word. I may have, I have, I have been memorized the scripture from line to line, precept to precept, but I know my word. And I see people sometimes and I think, God, what is that? I don't get this. They, 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 they put a nice little bow on that, tied it up, victimized themselves. Oh, selling my father. And I said, well, that don't make sense. And I'm not trying to judge anybody. I just am studying someone who studies like human behavior. And sometimes when I see things, it's clear to make us think, God, hmm. And he, and he, and he, you know, tell me. So I was thinking about, I said, God, we live in a generation they just get easily offended. They clapping back at people. You can't tell me what to do. I said, I, I don't remember it being like this. You know, when I was a kid, I mean, 
even if you don't agree with somebody, you ain't got to go go ham and go and that attitude, not that, that. You ain't got to do all that. But what's I don't get it? He said Samaria because it's the spirit of, of, of rebellion. And he says rebellion comes before us destruction. And so what happens is the reason why people can't receive wisdom or cannot be taught or receive correction or these things is because they are rebellious. And rebellion is witchcraft. Okay. You also deal with stress, burnout, and compassion fatigue. We're on number 10, y'all. Stress, burnout. And I did do a teaching called stress, burnout, and compassion fatigue. Um, you can check that out as well. Just type it in. Okay. Uh, sometimes compassion fatigue, you're doing the right thing for a long time, but you don't have proper like work-life balance. And we've seen that um, in this uh, pandemic uh, year, because so many people have experienced this on so many different levels from an individual level, a level from a family level or an organizational level, um, people being short-staffed in the organization, things like that. And a lot of the responsibilities are, are being put in place. So one or two people, and you experience uh, stress, which then leads to burnout, which just leads to f- compassion fatigue. And I did give you some really good solutions to that. So again, check out that video. You will have times you get discouraged. The Bible says, be not well, um, be not weary in well doing. You will reap if you face not. But you will, listen, these are things that are common to man. You will have to deal with feeling discouraged. Again, how long it stays and what you do and all that kind of stuff. But you have times where you feel discouraged. You feel like, what in the world? What, have, what, what what's, what's the point? Have I really affected someone's life in a positive way? You know, particularly after you have people abandon you and leave you and same people that you poured into lie on you and you had never nothing, all that kind of, you know, just stuff like that. You know, you can start to get discouraged a little bit. But remember in those times, like God told Paul, um, my strength is made um, um, strong uh, when you're weak. And so in those times of discouragement, it's still important to lean on the father, lean on the father. Uh, Absalom, <laughs> uh, listen. Let me shout out my book again. Absalom is perverted sonship. Now, Absalom, (coughs) excuse me, y'all, is someone who was trying to observe authority over his father. He wanted a position. He had a sense of entitlement. He wanted a position that he was not qualified for, and he thought his position with the father, being the father's son, would have gotten him there. Um, There's so much more I can say about that. Absalom is someone who wants to, again, uh, absorb the throne. This is someone, again, similar to like a Jezebel spirit, <coughs> wants to assassinate you. It could be a, 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 a perverted sonship. Someone you used to be, maybe be a spiritual son, uh, was a spiritual son to you, or someone that you helped to raise or develop. Um, they see you as someone to be conquered or competed with, and they try to dethrone you to put themselves in position. And again, you want to look up Absalom in the Bible. And in this wonderful book, plug again. I talk a lot about uh, perverted sonship. Okay, um, let me see what did I do. What did I say? What was the name of that title? Um, it was called um, per- yeah, perverted sonship. Okay, perverted sonship. <laughs> Click <babe. laughs> All right. Um, you also have to deal with unhealed wounds. Uh, you know, I said this before. This is how I ended up writing the book is that oftentimes people put in positions of leadership because of their talent, their skill, or their ability, but they, no one really discerns their wounds that affect their leadership capacity or ability. It'll affect your ability to stay there. And so if you ever had a leadership leader that is very controlling, manipulative, um, um, gaslighting, just anything like that, sometimes it has to do with their unhealed wounds. And so the Bible says a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men did not say anything about you remaining there it is your integrity your character your wholeness that that uh, allows you to stay in positions of uh, authority within within god's kingdom okay and so you want to make sure that you are um, aware of unhealed wounds um, because even in, within church and in business and in, uh, in, in human services field no one really considers your emotional capacity or the fact that you could um, do uh, experience transparency or counter transparency for your unhealed wounds, and how if you have unhealed wounds, remember hurting people, hurt people. Okay, <clears throat> hurting people, hurt people. Okay. Another one is baby Jesus syndrome. That means you have not properly delegated authority, you have not properly trained or developed people, and so you have to do it all by yourself. Okay. And again, I understand the shortage of staff from an organizational standpoint. I'm talking about when you just have not properly developed people. Uh, into position and you have 
a whole organization that is leaning on your strength, okay? <laughs> if you're only one person or two people or, you know what I'm saying, you have to properly delegate, develop, and train uh, people in, in, into leadership positions. You need your organization to be an organization where leaders lead, not just one person. Okay, I'm actually, y'all pray my screen, pray my strength in the Lord. <laughs> I'm actually writing a book um, and I won't tell you the full gist of the book because I don't even know when the book is going to come out at this point. I'm so busy. Um, but I'm writing a book and the book is called, um, oh, I'm not going to say the name because I want my steal it. I have them my, my behind work yet, but it's going to talk about um, how um, to train and develop uh, how we, we learn to lead. Okay. Um, and I'm not going to tell you anymore. So don't ask. <laughs> you have to be deal with people who are disrespectful now. I did the teaching on that. I feel like I'm going down with all the all the teachings that I've done in the last, I don't know, month or two or three. I don't know how long. Child, who the disrespect? Oh my God, my God. Hey, Lord. Ha, ha, ba, ba. Oh God. I can't deal with I just Lord. Now I'll pray my strength. I did that teaching was real good. It's called How Do You Deal with Disrespect? And that was real good too. So you just go down the line. It'll be all there. Just go down the line. I would post links, but I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> Woo! People that are disrespectful. And I just give me a minute. <laughs> I got all the answers, nothing to show for, and gonna buck up on you like they know something. Like, really? If you got all the information, why are you in front of my face? Disrespect. Don't ever, ever find yourself in relationships with people who are disrespectful. Don't let anybody show you the first time that they don't want you. Okay? Okay? Uh, people are disrespectful. They're dishonorable. They dishonor your authority. And they want to challenge you. You try to prove yourself to people who want to challenge you. Okay? That was a really good teaching. Y'all make sure y'all look at it. Uh, it's called How to Deal with Disrespect by Dr. Shinari M. Colbert. I can't, just listen, I told him on that live, on that teaching, there's one thing I don't, because I always honor, I honor, I treat people the way I want to be treated, and one thing I do is I show respect. Now, there's a difference between someone that you just show respect to, but someone that you, like, you respect from the, from the place of your heart where you generally, in your heart posture, you respect them as a person. I'm still going to treat everyone with respect the same way. Even if I don't like you, okay? There are some people, for whatever reason, we just not clicking. So I, you can't ever say Samaria disrespected. If you say Samaria disrespected you, it's probably more than likely something that you repeatedly had to keep doing over and over and over again. And then you backing me into a corner and I still didn't disrespect you. I told you how you was going to, how I would not be treated. And we're not going nowhere past today. And I still didn't disrespect you. I just dis I just dismissed people from, from my life. I cannot stand somebody that's disrespectful. And when you do that, I learn, like God said to Mary, don't go back and forth with this person. Don't tell them you better not ever, bop, bop, bop. I just get up, walk away. And I'll need, two weeks later, I don't even know your name. Okay. We have to deal with temptations. Okay, there is no temptation such as common to man. If you ever go through life and say, I've never, I'm sanctified, I've never dealt with temptation, darling. You lying. You will be, and now getting and what you do with the temptation. Jesus was tempted. The Bible says he went up to, uh, he went, he was a fast of 40 days to be tempted. He was led to be tempted of the enemy, but he led by the Holy Spirit. So if Jesus was tempted, what makes you think you're not going to be tempted? But you can pass the test. So you don't have to fall prey to temptation. Another translation says that the, after the temptation was over, the enemy left until the next opportunity came. You know what that means? You'll be tempted more than once. But you can pass that test as well. You don't have to fall prey to temptation. You don't have to. There was no temptation such as common to man, but Jesus will all, oh God will always give us a way of escape. If you want to be free from it, you can. But do you want to be free? Now, this last one, I put this on here, last two, 
uh, uh, I put this on here just for good measure. Because as a believer, you're not necessarily going to, um, as a leader, this is not exclusive to leaders. It's not. But as a believer, in general, as a person in general, uh, many, many people find themselves in relations with soul ties, soul tie connections. Okay? These are unhealthy, ungodly covenants and soul ties, people that you allow in your life, that God never gave, told you to put in your life in the first place, and you de- develop a soul tie connection. You can develop a soul tie connection with someone you are not sexually intimate with. Okay, it has to do with who has your ear, who has, you know, who has in your heart posture, and you can develop a soul tie because of that. Soul ties can be breaking. They are broken. They are difficult on onset. So this is someone who's, who's, who's kind of raptured your heart, got into your head, and now you have a soul tie connected that's ungodly, okay? Leaders have to be, um, uh, I think, in my opinion, that much more aware uh, because you will attract weak people. I said, like my mic on, I said you will attract weak people. Now, I'm not suggesting that you are weak. Okay, it just says I me mean, when you're a good hearted person, you're a kind hearted person, you got a little something going on, maybe you ain't got a whole lot, but you're natural leader. People are always looking for a savior, and they're not looking for a savior in Jesus, the savior. And so, oftentimes, people are looking for people to help them or rescue them. Call this learned helplessness. Uh, sometimes for my brothers, you meet a woman and she has a Cinderella complex, she's just waiting for the right man to come along and deliver her from all her fears and tears. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you can have men that have a Cinderella con. He just needs a place to stay. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So people lean on you and they look to you um, to rescue them from their lives. And so when you're a leader and you're naturally in that position, people tend to ideal, uh, idolize you almost and they, um, and they form opinions about you and they think you're supposed to fix all of their issues and their concerns. You have to be really careful about a soul tie. Can this person, this is why I did not lie, her proper placement. You have to be clear about who has proper placement. People that should be in the inner corridors of your heart are people that can pour back into you, that can handle you and your weaknesses, that has the ability that, 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 that they're not coming there with the hand out, they're coming there to help, to be a help mate to, to not to be a spouse, could be someone that sees and who has helped you to carry the burden, someone that is compatible or suitable for you. And you cannot have weak-minded people in that space. They will drain you like uh, pastor... What is that, Pastor? Oh gosh, I see Jerry Flower says, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're the person uh, that was your companion now becomes your assassin because you didn't pray. And then you allow someone into your space and they became a, a spiritual assassin to you because of who you allow. You develop a soul tie. Okay, that sometimes there are people who have limited capacity. They just don't have, they don't have the capacity. They don't have the capacity. Sometimes, they don't really like you. They just ha- they are they 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 are they uh are benefiting from somewhat from you, and they are drainers to your your process, your promise, your anointing, and your authority. Okay, so again, you pick up my book called Soul Ties. Talk about that a lot, and how if you connect with the soul tie long term, you just begin to develop a spiritual Ishmael. Uh, it just it just goes all about all bad, all wrong. Okay, that's not exclusive to leaders. Like I said. But when you're in a leadership position, you have to be a lot really discerning, observing, and asking and doing what the scripture says, acknowledging God in all your ways, and allow him to tell you who is in front of you. That's good, Samaria. Thank you, girl. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Enter way. And uh, this is another one. You will find people who are opportunists. Okay. Same along the lines with uh, soul ties. These people see you as an opportunity. They don't even like you. You ever had somebody and... I ain't gonna tell you my business, mind your business, mind your business. Oh. <laughs> These are people you ever meet somebody, you realize, you know what, you never actually liked me. You saw me as a come up. You have nothing going on with your life. I'm not bragging, I'm just telling you. Uh, you know, I had a friend and she's a beautiful uh, young lady. And um, we got to talking one time. And um, I was gonna reach out to her for something. I, I heard the 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 subtle voice of God, his Samaria got to be careful. He said, set boundaries with her. He said, you got to be careful that people will only, uh, people will only want to get close to you for what they can get from you. Okay. Because if you know anything about me, I may not have a lot of followers, but I'm true. I'm loyal. I got resources. I ain't gonna tell you all my business, but I am that chick. 
I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you I'm that chick. So he said, you got to be careful for people who only want to hang out with you for what they can get from you. These are people are opportunists. Now we all um, want people in our lives, but you can't be so desperate that you don't listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and you just have people in your life who in the back of your mind, you know, they, they're not, they're not who they say they are. And I said this before, and I don't even know how many times, because I be saying stuff, I have these wisdom points, and I just, I give them to y'all, okay? <clears throat> what I, <laughs> I was going to say just that quick, hold on. Um, oftentimes when you meet people, okay, and you are someone who operates a certain level of, of wisdom, again, leadership, and you, particularly when you start having more of a following, um, you meet people who um, are not true. To who they actually really are. I always tell when you meet someone for the first time, they're trying to impress you. You don't meet them, you meet their representative. Okay, you meet the person that they want you to be. Um, I was listening to um, someone I really uh, love again, Bishop Archie, Archie Blakes. He said sometimes people just they will be they'll, they'll they're gathering information, narcissistic uh, um, at best. They're gathering information, and they don't really like themselves, so they will be the person they think they want you to be. Okay, so as a single woman, I've experienced this as well. You know, I meet guys, and once they know that I am a PhD or I have a business, or I've written all these books or whatever, <clears throat> then they start hyping themselves up to be what they think I want them to be. Now you're the great apostle to the nations. I don't care if you're an apostle. I don't care if you work at the bank. Don't matter. You know, don't, don't make me. Don't never mind. And they try to hype themselves up to be what they think you want or desire, but that's not who they really are. At the end of the day, the real you will always show up. OK, it's going it's, to eventually it's going to reveal itself. And so as a leader, you have to understand you are more pray, pray, P-R-E-Y to us oh, and susceptible to these type of people because you are more visi- vis- visible, you are more visible than the average person. And so when someone comes into your space and your corridor and they smile in your face and they give you flattery, you have to discern who's who and what's what. And I can give you so many examples. I've, I've talked about it on live and I talk about these things from my own life because I've experienced that. I had people, you know, uh, sit in my, uh, in, in my space and they articulate in scripture because you know I love the word of God and they become super spiritual because they know that I love Jesus and, and they become, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the entrepreneur and I don't, I don't care about, you know, you don't have to impress me like that. I'm the entrepreneur because they know I have a business. You understand what I'm saying? And, and the Holy Ghost says, no, nah, this, this, this person ain't really who they say that they are. And I told you the experience I had. I had somebody that was trying to like date me and a man was homeless, but he's on live uh, 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 articulating scripture. Talking about he's an entrepreneur. No, you need a place to stay. Not over here. Okay, not over here. All right, so again, <clears throat> what do you do with this information? One, you have to be discerning. You have to have your ear to God. You have to silence yourself and, and silence all the other voices to hear from God does not mean you had this distrust of people and you're like, oh, don't talk to me until I hear from God first. It just means that you are discerning uh, so that you don't make, so you don't be distracted. Now, I don't know about you. I'm in my 40s. I don't have time to be distracted five, 10 years over some foolery. Okay? Remember, the Bible says the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. So if someone has deceived you, and you say you had the Holy Spirit. It's not that the Holy Spirit was not talking. It's that you were not listening because your heart was hardened towards something and you were not listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Okay. We have to listen to God because you cannot, you, I don't care. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care how much you play the victim. Look at such a chance to me. You had the Holy Spirit down on the inside of you. And can nobody deceive you without permission, without your permission. I did a lot called chaos, confusion inside of me. Two reasons why you experience chaos and confusion. One, something you allow, other times something God is allowing in you. All right. We'll go to another one. So I did remember the other two lives. I'm going to do one about <clears throat> the coming up. I'm going to be doing one about the spirit of Ishmael. Okay. And I'm going to do another one. It's called um about trauma bonds how do we avoid trauma bonds we you, we god wants to and he is going to send us divine connections but you want to discern the difference between a divine connection and a trauma bond sometimes people think because we have similar pains and similar 
turmoils and we have met each other now that you are the one for me no it's a trauma bond okay god bless you check me out www.drsamaricobra.com that's the name of my website my training courses training list training christian leaders.com that's the name of that website and purchase your course or <clears throat> if you want to know about my my counseling website www.kingdomcreativecounseling.com but god bless We'll see you another day, another time, another banger. Bye.